Hey everyone, uh, continuing from my previous video where I showed how to set up Alpine Linux uh, development environment, I thought I'll take it to its logical conclusion and show you guys how you can set up um, a working C environment, a C tool chain as it were. Uh, setting it up with GCC is rather trivial, you just do apk install GCC and that does the job. But I wanted to go ahead and do something uh, a bit more challenging but at the same time equally important. I'm not really a fan of uh, the GNU tool chain and the GCC compiler in particular. Uh, not to say that it's a bad piece of technology, not at all, it's, it's a rather remarkable feat of engineering. But at the same time, uh, I'm much more of an LLVM person myself, so I wanted to get started with that. Uh, LLVM, for those of you do not, who do not know, is an alternate open source C compiler. Uh, that's not the right way to put it. It's a compiler framework, right? So it's a very modular piece of technology that anybody can pick up and build their tool chain on top of it. The software overhead is, the abstraction is a very low overhead abstraction. Uh, but enough rambling, uh, let's get started with that. Uh, let's try apk add clang uh, because we need a C compiler. Uh, as you can see, it installs a bunch of uh, dependencies like foreign, uh, I think it's called foreign function interface, which is fine. Um, Exetlib is for compression, which is fine. XML, fine. LLVM 10 libs is fine, but these two packages are again from the GNU utilities, right? So the libgcc and libstandard C++ are the standard runtimes for the, from the GNU utility. And at this point, LLVM is not mature enough to have its own. I mean, it, they do have their own alternative, but they just don't ship those alternates by default uh, at the time of this video, at least. This might change in future, fingers crossed. So the remaining the remainder of this video will be about you know how to circumvent these edge cases. Uh, let's see if the download is finished. It's going to take a while. Um, but yeah, once the compiler is installed, we would also need header files. Uh, and the reason I I selected Alpine was it did not use glibc, which is again from the GNU uh, project. It uses something known as muscle. So I don't know if I can show. Yep. Uh, is the site online? Of course it isn't. Yeah, it has moved. Hmm. Yeah. Muscle is an implementation of C standard library. So this is this is what your dynamically linked uh, binaries use to call the kernel functionalities, right? So uh, Muscle is an alternate for glibc, and this is what we are going to use. Uh, this is what Alpine uses. So we'll get the header files that correspond to Muscle C, right? Uh, and for that, we'll just do Alpine add uh, MUSL dev and it does that. Uh, let me just update the system for good measure. Uh, let's see what else do we need. So uh, by the way, I also have a blog post on how to do that. So you don't have to hear my cringy voice. If you're much more of a visual uh, reading person, you can just go to the blog post. I'll have the link in the description, I guess. Um, so yeah, uh, we have gotten the compiler. Uh, we have gotten the standard library. Uh, I missed out on linker, so let's install linker. So uh, GNU utilities usually supply you with LD, but we are not getting that. We are trying to get something else. So let's do apk add LLD, which is the LLVM linker. Let's see if I have a page open for it. Nope. LLD dot LLVM dot not ROG, it's ORG. 
the LLVM linker. So all of these uh, various projects have their own uh, pages on LLVM.org. I highly recommend you check these uh, people out. They are really amazing and they're really advancing the field of science as far as I'm concerned. Um, so what did I just do? Yeah, I installed LLD, so that's the linker sorted. Um, so we have a compiler, we have a linker. Now the next piece of the puzzle is to get compiler runtime. So these are these are the runtime libraries that your compiler needs to do its job. And there are two of these again supplied by the supplied by the LLVM uh, project. So let's add them compiler RT compiler RT static. All right. Uh, let's get a simple C program, the classic hello world. Doesn't hurt anyone, does it? Stdio dot h. Always have a return statement for the sake of your own sanity. And let's add a void here. Mm, looks good. Let's see if there is any syntax error here. If we run clang hello, uh, you would see that there is an error here. It says executable LD does not exist because we did not install LD but clang still defaults to the GNU utility. So it's, it's expecting a linker named LD. So to overwrite that, we'll just use uh, fuse LD, LLD, and that fixed the LD problem, but it created a whole bunch of other problems. This is because it's still trying to use, and we can see why that is. If I run minus V for a more verbose output, uh, you can see it's trying to uh, let's see what it's trying to do hmm. it's trying to get compiler runtime and it's trying to get it's trying to get files which should be provided by compiler RT but somehow it's not able to get those so let's see if we can fix that with another flag uh, and let me just refer my blog post for it because I've already solved this problem. Um, yeah, so the flag for it is rtlib and it's compiler rt. No need for a v here and hopefully this should output a hello. Uh, let's see. If hello works yeah it does um, let's try something else um, let's try to build a static binary so pr probably the reason you want to use something like Alpine is to build static binaries because you don't know where your project is going to run even if let's see you know you write a really interesting project which uses CLang and Alpine and Muscle and all these cool technologies, somebody would want to run it in a Ubuntu system or, you know, God forbid, a Fedora system or an Arch Linux system, right? Like all the systems that use glibc as, as the default C library. So it wouldn't make any sense to, you know, go, to, go through all these trouble if, if, if you don't make your project more approachable, more um, more portable right and ironically C was supposed to be the portable assembly but we have found ourselves in this place where uh, C libraries are bringing us down right so let's find a way around it let's um, remove the binary I built and we'll use a flag called static I think it's just one dash 
nope I placed the flag in the wrong place I guess yeah and I'll install the handy package to show you that it's a static binary so if I do file hello I mean let's first see you know if it works hello and yeah it's working if I do file hello you can see it says hello is an executable link linked format a 64-bit binary essentially uh, I might have gotten the acronym wrong but don't quote me on that uh, so yeah like it's essentially a binary that's what elf means and it is statically linked uh, that's all you need to know uh, for the purposes of this demonstration if for instance um, let's just also see how big the file is uh, because it's just printing hello right so it should be reasonably small it's 124 kilobytes which I would say is a bit much for what it's doing uh, so let's remove the flag and see what happens now if I run file hello this is a completely different program with the same behavior because if I run like if I can type today yeah it still prints hello but if I run file you can see that this is dynamically linked which is to say to execute this file you would have to ha you want to have this uh, lib uh, glibc dependency in our case it's muscle but let's say you built this project on a ubuntu system it would be a glibc dependency so which is why a static flag is so important because it helps you build static binaries and then you can just throw it out on, onto the internet right and people can people can run it on their system as long as they have a compatible linux kernel version the binary would run uh, the benefit of having a dynamic uh, dynamically linked binary is that they are going to be much smaller and there is a lot less repeated code as you can see this is just 8 kilobytes in size because all the heavy lifting all the kernel semantics are handled by uh, the the library over here the muscle library so it's an interesting trade-off um, if you want to if you want to learn more about linking and compiling i would highly suggest again the llvm documentation is extraordinarily good on this uh, i'll have linked to um, all these projects in the description uh, especially the main uh, post from the llvm community that excited me uh, or encouraged me to make this video i think that's that i have rambled a little too long on this video sorry about that i hope you guys have a nice day